Welcome and thank you for joining us today for the 12th and final installment of MotionSoft's eight-week Technology Summit Education Series. Our session today is titled Embracing Digital Partnerships with Under Armour Connected Fitness to extend your reach, influence, profitability, and growth. Your presenter today is Bill Besselman, VP of Integration and Digital Strategies, who you'll meet in just a moment. My name is Todd Tweedy. I'm based at MotionSoft's corporate offices in Rockville, Maryland, and it's been my absolute pleasure to serve as your moderator throughout the entire series. I want to let you know that the 2016 MotionSoft Technology Summit will be held in Washington, D.C. on September 13th through 15th. A link to register for the summit will be provided to all webinar attendees. The Summit Webinar Education Series was designed to support your professional development by giving you access to industry-leading thinkers and companies that are driving innovation in the fitness arena. I also want to take a moment to thank the 400-plus fitness industry professionals who made this series such a success. And of course, this, this series wouldn't have been possible without the support and participation of, of many different companies, including Under Armour Connected Fitness, H2Fit, Retention Guru, MyZone, Matrix, Clara Bridge, Manette, Visual Fitness Planner, My Body Score, Reunify, Kinevitz, and NetPulse. Thank you to every one of the companies for supporting us today. I want to take a moment just to keep you up to date on some activities that are taking place at MotionSoft and specifically our back office support services. As you may now be aware, MotionSoft is a 100% PCI certified full service billing solutions company, which complements our industry leading enterprise and small business club management applications. The MotionSoft full service solution set leverages two best of breed resources. One is a full service dedicated in-house team and an automated rules-based back office support service or BOSS technology platform. If you're interested in exploring full service billing or our standalone BOSS platform, please contact your support representative by calling 1-800-829-4321 or by emailing support at motionsoft.net. Now, finally, let's take a moment just to ensure that everyone's familiar with the webinar control panel and how to pose questions to your presenter today. First, you should have a control panel on the right side of your screen, similar to the image that you're seeing here on this slide. If you don't uh, have that control panel on your screen, look in your taskbar for the orange clover icon and click it to open the control panel. You'll have the ability to submit questions during the webinar by using the question feature, which we've kind of highlighted here with a red uh, frame. If you could just take a moment now and practice using the question interface, maybe just try typing hello. Awesome, thank you, appreciate that. Brian, much appreciated. I think everybody's got a good handle on how to use the interface. Uh, finally, I wanna let you know that uh, there will be a Q&A session that'll be held with your presenter at the end of this presentation. If we do happen to run out of time or not able to address your questions, uh, our presenter will follow up with you directly. Again, this webinar is being recorded. Your microphones are muted, but you will have the ability to ask questions via the question feature we've just reviewed. After the webinar concludes, you'll be sent an email with a link to download this presentation as well as the webinar recording. Now, it's my privilege to turn over this presentation to your presenter today, Bill Besselman. Bill, welcome to the MotionSoft Technology Summit Education Series. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks, Todd. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity and uh, hopefully be able to share some interesting things for folks to uh, think about and chew on. Um, so, so thanks to the, to, to the group for the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about um, three things I'm going to go through today. Uh, first is talking a little bit about Under Armour, just share who we are. I assume that most folks on, on the line uh, know who we are, but just a little bit of background to set the context. Second, I'm going to talk about what we're doing in Connected Fitness, uh, what we call our next frontier of growth. Uh, talk about uh, the acquisitions that we've made of late uh, and then how we're thinking about uh, those acquisitions and how they fit into what Under Armour is doing more broadly. Uh, and then last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about what that means in terms of opportunity for all of us, not just for Under Armour, but I think perhaps uh, also opportunity for some of the folks uh, here on the phone as you think about growth in your own businesses. So those are the three things I want to cover. Uh, the way it works at Under Armour is we typically start with a little video just to, to give folks uh, sort of set the energy and set the tone. And so what I'm going to walk or show next is about a two 
two or three minute video. It's something we call Voice of the Brand, which is just a way for us to show and share what's going on at Under Armour and around uh, around the brand uh, in the market uh, with a little bit of um, a little bit of music set to it. So hopefully you'll enjoy that, and then we'll then we'll get into some of the details. But first, let me start with the Voice of the Brand, so you can get a feel, get a feel for who we are. They're the best in the game. They're aggressive, young, fearless, fearless, fearless. Success. Just getting started. The culture of our company is really about winning. I'm so passionate about winning. I love it so much. The guys are kicking y'all's butts. Y'all should be embarrassed. <laughs> Championship, baby. Love the enthusiasm, but it's a little distracting. With one MVP. Tell us what happened out there. I'm not saying I'm the Taylor Super Boxing, but I'm not not saying I'm the Taylor Super Boxing. Hey, baby, now we got that You know we used to be that So take a look what you've done. Cause baby, now we got that I've never been one of those early girls. First things first, we the realest, and we got to make the whole world feel it. Reaching on down, yeah, get rocky. You fall in the norm over Nike. You fall in the norm over Nike. Oh, what's up? What's up? So, uh, so hopefully that gives you a sense for who we are. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of energy in there, and a couple of things I would just point out before I go into the detail of who we are is the things that if you saw that voice or brand video and how it evolves over time. There's a lot more in there that, that you're hearing as we talk about international, as we talk about basketball and footwear, and particularly as we talk about digital, which will be the focus of our discussion today, uh, and what we're doing in Connected Fitness and how it's become an, an ever-increasing importantly or more important part of the Under Armour story, not just for now but for the future. And that's really, uh, I think, really important for you all to hear because it's just a big part of where our investment of both time, energy, uh, and money will go over time. But let me start with just a little bit of... Uh, where we started from. So in some ways our story is a very simple story. Uh, the picture of the guy in the middle is our founder, CEO, and chairman, Kevin Plank. Uh, under Armour started with a really simple idea to make it um, a little bit uh, better and uh, more comfortable for young football players to, to, to put on their pads every week uh, and instead of having to wear uh, a long sleeve flannel t-shirt or cotton t-shirt that weighs three pounds once it gets wet to make something that makes it a little bit better for those athletes so they can play a little bit more comfort and play a little bit more close, a little bit closer to the edge. And so at its core, that's where we started was just the idea, that simple idea of bringing technology to the equipment 
to the to the to products that that football players wear, and and obviously over time that's evolved quite a bit. But uh, but the, what you'll see in the upper right hand corner is Grandma's Row House. That's where we started the company 19 years ago, and almost 20 years ago now, actually uh, in 2016. And then the bottom right is where we started from the inventory perspective. So you know this this company that's gotten very big, very fast, uh, has its roots not very far from where we are today in Maryland, and, and uh, our, our, our current CEO and chairman is, is our founder. So it's an important part of who we are because it talks about the, you know, you, you heard in that video where it kicked off is this idea of aggressive, young, and fearless. Uh, we aren't that far removed from, from that, that startup entrepreneur, and that's the mentality that we bring to the game. So uh, at any rate, the, this is the sort of beginning of the story for Under Armour. Uh, we are now a global company. We went from you know 20 years ago, 19 years ago now uh, in Grandma's basement in, in D.C. to uh, 13,000 teammates, a global headquarters based in Baltimore, right on the harbor, uh, offices in a large number of cities now, but an ever-expanding reach uh, and an ever-expanding presence. Uh, we are we are ready to play on the on the global stage, uh, and that's that's certainly our intention. Um, behind all that is uh, 19 years of growth, and you can see 2015 is in there as a TBD. And, and I can tell you that you know while we're a few few weeks away from the end of the year, I can tell you that uh, we will see again 20 plus percent growth. We've got 22 straight quarters of 20 percent growth uh, in the bag, and, and we continue to to uh, grow at that level and expect to continue to grow at that level. But it's a story. It's a growth story, a story that we're very proud of, and it's an important part of again of who who the dear, who we are and our DNA is 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 about growth. Um, we are anchored in our mission to make all athletes better through passion, design, and the relentless pursuit of innovation. Our mission uh, is what drives us. It's the thing that centers us, that anchors us, that our decisions on what to invest in, what to do, um, all revolve around this idea of making all athletes better. The entry into connected fitness is, is fundamentally about helping athletes be better. And second, about empowering athletes. Our vision is around empowering athletes everywhere, putting the equipment and tools in their hands, giving them the ability to make the decisions and remove friction and in, in challenges in, in, in their performance. So uh, if, our, if our mission is to make all athletes better, our vision is to really empower them to put the athlete in control. Uh, and again, this, these are central core ideas to why we got into Connected Fitness, and I'll expand on that in just a few moments. Uh, in addition to that, we are, as I said already, a growth company. Uh, it's a very, very important very important part of what we are when we build our 2020 vision we made a very clear statement at the beginning is that we are going to be about growth uh, we are going to be about pushing boundaries and, and, and driving Under Armour to, to new levels in terms of size and, and reach and there really are five core growth drivers or historically have been five core growth drivers men's women's footwear international and our direct consumer business uh, and that's really what sustained uh, us to this point, and we think there's uh, plenty of um, gas left in the engine, if you will, to, to, to sustain the level that we're on for the next uh, number of years, frankly. Um, and the reason that I start here in, in, in these five core growth drivers is that the connected fitness business, which is what I think is our next frontier, does two things. It One, there are three things, I guess. It One, it, as I said, it, it, um, it sort of leverages off of that mission and vision. It's really based on delivering on that mission and vision. But two, it allows us to accentuate all those core growth drivers that I just showed you a moment ago. It allows us to drive faster growth in men's, women's, footwear, international, and more direct consumer growth. And it allows us to grow into new places as well. So there really are three core purposes, if you will, for why Under Armour got into and built out a connected fitnesses business. And, and, and it, as I said, it is to sort of further the mission and vision of the company to drive our core engines uh, and to expand the footprint of the brand into new uh, markets that allow us to continue to grow over the long term. Uh, many of you will be aware of, of uh, how we entered into this market. I'll walk you through over the next few pages this, the history, if you will, that got us here. But at its core, the business today is, uh, is the series of acquisitions that we made over the last 20 months, 24 months, excuse me. Uh, we bought three companies, uh, Map My Fitness, My Fitness Pal, and Endomondo. Uh, those three uh, communities we spent a little over $700 million for, uh, and we're up to about 160 million users. We'll add probably about 40 million users here uh, uh, into the community in 2015. Um, we were at 120 million when we completed the, the, um, the final acquisitions at the beginning of this year. 
but the core of our business, of our connected fitness business, are these communities. And the next few pages, I'll walk you through how we got there uh, and why community is the important starting point for us. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about how we're thinking about connected fitness. Um, and in some ways, it starts in a very simple way, showing you a video. This is the 2010 NFL Combine, and you can see a shirt that these athletes are wearing. Uh, Under Armour sponsors the NFL Combine, and, and uh, before the Combine, probably six, nine months before the Combine, Kevin came to came to Kip, who's this number two guy in, in the company, came along with Kevin and said, take this compression shirt and electrify it. Uh, make it electric. Uh, and so what came out of that is this shirt that you're seeing in this video where we basically took some really advanced accelerometry, some heart rate um, sensors, et cetera, and we embedded it in a, t in a compression t-shirt and we put it on these amazing athletes. And we let people collect a very rich set of data. Um, and you know the, the truth of the matter is, well, that shirt looks like it's seamless and, and beautiful and all that. It's really a, a bailing wire and duct tape that held it all together. Uh, and eventually what happened is we evolved that that t-shirt to this product called Armor 39. So that E39 t-shirt turned into that product that you can see um, uh, Canelo there wearing down the, down the road. And, and uh, I think this is uh, Kemba Walker uh, and GSP, etc. It turned into what, what we called Armor 39. And this was really our entry into digital at the time, our, our first entry into Connected Fitness, our first entry into hardware. And what we learned by actually this evolution and by doing these products is that uh, it is fundamentally really, really hard to be a consumer electronics company. It's really hard to do hardware uh, and software, et cetera. So the lot, a lot of why we ultimately made the acquisitions was driven by this insight that while we are typically a product company, we make shirts and shoes, it was natural for us to think about making hardware, consumer electronics, connected hardware uh, is fundamentally different and, and just a real challenge for us to do alone. Uh, the other thing we discovered is is the value of community in terms of um, in terms of really helping athletes improve where they get their motivation from, et cetera. And this, I'm going to show you a series of pictures that kind of bring that to life for us. So this is a picture in 2005, uh, St. Peter's Square, uh, um, and uh, this is just before I don't remember which pope, but just before the pope was announced. And you can see in this picture, there's you know literally all these folks just standing there waiting to see who the next pope is going to be. In the lower right hand corner, we circled somebody on their phone, it's a little flip phone, who looks like they're going to try to take a picture of that. And a mere uh, eight years later, the same exact place, the same exact uh, set of activities, a new pope is being announced, and you can see that the picture is now a sea, a sea of cameras. The people aren't there anymore, they're there to take the picture. Uh, and so this idea that we, sort of the insight that we garnered, and the picture just brings it to life, but that we were developing as we were building out that Harbor product is that the value is in the community. Uh, individuals take take motivation from, they take motivation for their fitness from their community members, their social group, the people that are around them, their trainers, their family, their friends. And the community was frankly a lot more value than being the expert in hardware. And those two insights really le led us to the acquisitions that we ultimately kind of drove. And what I'd say is in, in Connected Fitness, our vision relative to that is really simple. If social is really owned by Facebook, if LinkedIn owns business, we intend as Under Armour to own health and fitness in that same kind of way. It's around the community, the not just social elements of the community, but the community in terms of the ability to motivate, the community in terms of being able to share your results and and um, and post those results and, and compete, if you will. We intend to own health and fitness in that same way. We intend to own the community of health and fitness, and we intend to do that globally. That's at its core was the vision that drove with those insights to just walk you through why we did the acquisitions we did. First, Map My Fitness with 20 million members when we first bought it, the ability to track your workouts. Once we had that, we realized that we needed a geographic growth that drove into Mondo. And once we saw that, we realized that we didn't have the complete picture, so we needed nutrition. And that's why we got uh, went out and acquired MyFitnessPal. But it, at, at its core, those few insights and that vision for owning health and fitness is what drove our entry into this marketplace and our acquisitions. Uh, in terms of how we're going to and how we're thinking about evolving uh, connected fitness for ourselves, we think about really four things. Uh, first is equip. Second is track, third is coach, and fourth is inspire. And we see this as a virtuous cycle. Our job, our strategy, if you will, in building out the connected fitness is one, 
to equip athletes, to equip them with the right apps, the right devices, the right shoes and apparel, make sure that they have everything they need to be able to be fit, if you will. Second, we our second sort of focus area is on tracking, world-class tracking, friction-free tracking. How do we take the friction out of enabling all that data that gets collected off of these devices and get it into a single place for the consumer, the athlete, to see a full picture of their activity, see a full picture of their, their wellness, their fitness, etc. Third is to coach. Now that you've got all these folks with devices and all this data collected, how do you take that and give back to the community? How do you help the athlete be a little better? How do you give them recommendations on their sleep patterns or on their food intake or on their workouts, or the kind of workouts? So this idea of really super hyper-personalized coaching based on your data and your workouts and your goals is the third leg of the, of the stool, if you will. And then last but not least, which is very natural for us, is the inspiration part. Now we inspire primarily through our athletes uh, and through the authentication of those athletes, but just as importantly, we inspire through the community. Uh, one of the things, you know, obviously a lot of segments of people in the world, one of the things that we've learned is that, you know, while there's a big segment of folks who are inspired by you know, top tier athletes, there are also a large number of folks, an ever increasing number of folks who are inspired by their, the, the folks that are around them. They're driven by the recommendations of their friends and their community members. And so inspiration is a combination for us of bringing our athletes to bear and bringing the community to bear, enabling the community to cheer each other on, if you will. So in terms of how we're thinking about connected fitness in the marketplace, there are four things that we will spend our time investing people, energy, and, in, and dollars in, and that's equipping the athletes, helping them track in a really frictionless way, providing coaching so that we can help them improve against the goals that they've set for themselves, and then inspiration for when they hit those low points to keep them going, to keep them in the fight, if you will. So that's how we're thinking about the strategy. But at, at the important thing for us to always remember, and if anyone ever hears talk, Kevin talk about connected fitness, and I think it's important for you guys to understand why we're, why we're about it, at the end of the day, as I said, we're a growth company, and while we we're building out this new growth platform called Connected Fitness, and I said it earlier, we can't forget to sell shirts and shoes. That is our business. That's what we Under Armour do. We outfit athletes, and so a lot of what we're trying to do is to ensure that we are first in line when that athlete needs a new shirt or needs a new shoe. We're using shirts and shoes to help them do their workouts a little bit better, feel a little bit more comfortable, etc. So a lot of our work uh, in Connected Fitness is really around driving that core business and so driving that shirts and shoes. Business. What we know without a doubt, we've seen it in the data now from 160 million people, is that the more people work out, the more shirts and shoes they buy for working out. Not a big surprise probably because the things that you wear, wear out and so you need new stuff and then you need new shirts and shoes to be inspired to continue to work out and they become rewards for yourself, etc. But at the end of the day, if there's one objective for Connected Fitness, it's to sell more shirts and shoes, to sell more gear to our, our athletes so that they can, they can continue to achieve their goals. So how are we going to do that? What's the opportunity? So, so I step back and I think Under Armour is a growth company. It's got a mission of making all athletes better and empowering them by putting tools and equipment in their hand that allows them to achieve their goals. Under Armour wants to grow and we built this connected fitness business, the opportunity for all of us, I think, is, is this idea of creating 24-7 experiences for athletes. And one of the reasons that we think this is important is you look at this page, you know, if you think about a, a person's entire day, what we were essentially getting before we got into the connected fitness business is we were getting one slice. We were getting maybe an hour, half an hour, 45 minutes of a person's time. That workout slice was the time of day that we got. The other 23 hours of the day, we saw nothing we weren't involved in, uh, we weren't influencing in a big way, uh, and we as a brand knew that we were, we were doing some influence by the shops that we were building, and we were doing some influence by the athletes that we were, we were um, in using and, and leveraging and, and uh, investing in, but we did not have a way to really make ourselves a part of somebody's day, and so at the end of the day, what we think the big opportunity is, is to deliver what we call 24-7 experiences. Let's move outside of the workout, and I guess for, for many folks, and so let's move outside of the gym. You know, we get visited, um, or in, our brand gets engaged today, maybe four times a week, maybe five or six by the really big enthusiasts. 
for an hour a day. Uh, we want to be a part of our athletes' entire life. We think our brand has got reasons for being uh, in other parts of our consumers' experience in life, and we think that uh, we can be helpful in terms of our mission of making all athletes better uh, and of empowering them. We think we can help people live healthier lives if we move out of our one-hour slice of the day, which is the workout. So our opportunity is to, in a collective way, deliver 24-7 experiences. And so when I talk about what our strategy is of equipping, of tracking, of coaching and inspiring, you'll hear us talk more about uh, the entirety of the athlete's life. We're going to start talking more about wellness uh, and health uh, in addition to fitness. Fitness is only one, one arm of the, of, the, of, the, of the future opportunity. So I think the opportunity opportunity again for all of us is to say how do we get outside of the little space we play in. Ours was the one hour that they had when they were doing their workout. Yours may be the one hour that they spend at your gym or the, the one hour that they spend with the trainer. So we think there's 23 hour, other hours of the day that brands like ours uh, should, should have a place and have an important place uh, in, in athletes' lives. So that's the opportunity that we're building toward is this idea of 24-7 experiences. That's where we think the future is taking us. That's where we think our brand has a right to play, and that's where we think um, you know, a lot of brands uh, we think will overtake, frankly. You'll hear us uh, as we move into these 24-7 experiences, as we talk about the 24-7 experience, you're going to hear us talking a lot about these four things, sleep, fitness, activity, and nutrition. As I said, we're very mission-oriented. Our job is to make all athletes better, and we're starting to expand the definition of athlete. Our job is to empower all athletes, put the tools in their hand. And what we're starting to think through and we're, we're going to be talking to athletes about is these four elements. You can't talk about your fitness alone. You can't say, hey, I worked out an hour a day. If the rest of the day, if I didn't get any sleep, but the rest of the day I sat on my butt and I ate you know, 7,000 calories, you're not going to be very fit. And so as we went out and we talked to athletes and we spent time with athletes, both at the professional and elite level, the amateur level, and the everyday level, what we heard more and more is these four elements, when they come together, these four things are what really guide and decide whether a person's truly healthy or well, if they're really fit. Uh, and so as we move to 24-7 experiences, you're going to see us talking about sleep, fitness, activity, and nutrition. And we think we're particularly well placed to deliver against that. We have in Matt, my fitness and in Endomondo, we have the ability to really track and understand your fitness, your 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 um, your workouts, if you will. We also have through those apps the ability to understand not directly through our hardware, but through existing hardware and future hardware, your daily sleep activity and your in your exercise, or your, excuse me, your daily walking around activity. So we've got three quarters of the picture from really from our core my, Matt My Fitness and Indomondo apps. And then last but not least, we have with MyFitnessPal the nutrition piece, the world's largest food database ever in mankind, the world's largest recipe database ever in mankind. We have the ability to put this whole picture together for athletes so that they can see that complete picture. And we have an ability through this lens to really touch our athletes 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to really truly help them be better against whatever goal they've set for themselves, whether that is a little bit healthier, whether that's a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, just achieving uh, or, or finishing a run race, whatever it is, we now have the ability to tell a complete story to deliver a 24-7 experience to athletes in a way that we have not ever done before. Now we have a lot of work to deliver that in a seamless way and to, to, to really truly embed ourselves in athletes' lives. But this is a direction, this is the opportunity that we're trying to set up for ourselves collectively. And we think, frankly, um, is the opportunity for you all as well. Um, and, you know, as we think about it, there really are three options. And this is kind of, frankly, a little bit how we thought about it for ourselves. We can do nothing. Uh, we could try to partner our way to this, or we could uh, go it alone. And, uh, frankly, and what you see on the screen in front of you is uh, on the left side is the pros, if you will, and it's not a complete picture. This is not meant to be exhaustive, uh, but it just a sort of at least how we thought about it, some of the pros of going alone, partnering, or, or, um, or, uh, or not doing anything at all, and then some of the cons. Obviously, you can ignore what's happening around you. We, can, we, we could all say, you know, all this technology stuff, like all this sort of monitoring and tracking, all these hardware devices that people are aware of, these sensors. I don't believe in any of that stuff. Like it's not it's not for me. 
and that's a really inexpensive short-term perspective. We happen to believe from a long-term, it's very expensive. We don't think that this is a trend that's going away. Um, you know, the simple example is, for us at least, is, you know, if you went back eight years, the Apple iPhone did not exist, was not on the planet Earth. And today, Apple is worth three quarters of a trillion dollars, sells millions and millions of iPhones, and we wouldn't know what to do without them. Without Apple and Samsung, half the, half the global population could not communicate now. That was eight years ago that it didn't exist. Eight years ago, we were happy to not be on the Internet, happy to not be able to text, happy to make a phone call from a flip phone on occasion when we weren't out of the house. So we believe that the, the, the continuing march on of technology, doing nothing, is a really bad option. Now, it might be a good option for a while. It's very inexpensive in the short term. We believe, in this part of why we took the, the direction we did, that long term, you are going to end up on the outside looking in. You'll end up on the wrong side of history. Uh, and then the next set of options, and I think the options for you guys, are to think about um, doing it alone. You know, going off and, and building your own connected fitness business or, or sort of building your own connected fitness strategy. The upside of that is clearly you get control, 100% control, what you want to make happen, you can make happen. You set the direction, you set the tone, and you set the pace, the speed. You're not, you're not encumbered by anyone. Um, so going alone, you get a lot of control in, in terms of what the strategy is, what the execution is, and what the pace is. The downside of going alone is that it's expensive and it has a little bit more risk because you're setting your own path. Now, those aren't bad things. We've obviously made some choices at Under Armour to, to go it alone in, in some cases. And we also have partnered and continue to partner. Uh, but this is, this is a, the second strategy we see for folks is just to, to go it alone. Go build out your own connected fitness business. Go build out the assets that you need. Set your own strategy and execution. Um, obviously, upsides are on control and speed. The downsides, though, is it's very expensive. Uh, trust me when I tell you that. Uh, and then the, the risk is a little higher. Um, now, there's more reward potentially, but the risk is higher. And the last, but you know, the last, last uh, sort of option that we see is is partnering. And the value of partnering is that you get scale and leverage very, very quickly. Uh, much bigger partners than us are out there, and that's this is frankly the approach that we're we're taking. Is as you all know, we've got a partnership with HTC uh, on the on the hardware side of the business. We don't we're not hardware players. They are. We're able to scale and leverage through their capability much much more quickly than we would on our own. And two is you get insight. You get the understanding of that part or that partner's understanding of the marketplace and where it's going, etc. And you all, I mean, as, as uh, in your seats, I ought to be thinking about a guy like Under Armour in the same way. Like, we could be a partner to you because we would offer scale and leverage. We are much bigger. We are already down the path. We can help you get somewhere much more quickly. And we have a bunch of insight on what works and what doesn't work, at least today. It's not that the game is finished by any stretch of the imagination, but you get to accelerate the path a little. The downside of partnering and even partnering with a guy like us is you give up some control. It's not your strategy in total. It's not your execution in total, et cetera. And then it becomes a little bit more challenging to differentiate potentially because you're now encumbered by the, uh, the partner who frankly could have other partners as well. But I simply laid this page out for you it, it, because as I think about the challenges for you all, I mean, I, I take my, my worldview from Under Armour and where we're headed, and obviously we have a lot of belief about connected fitness and digital, what it means for the future for our athletes and the future for fitness and the future for our whole market segment, and I say to myself, well, what does that mean if I'm sitting in, in your seat? And as I said, I, I think there really are three options for you all. Uh, you can do nothing, you can go it alone, or you can find a way to partner and get there, I believe, much, much more quickly. Uh, and I think, that's, um, I think that's what you ought to be asking yourself is given where the world's going, and you can believe it or you cannot believe it, I, I leave that up to you. Uh, I, I clearly fall on the side that you believe it. I think you have to quickly determine what you're going to do about it, um, how you're going to attack, and, and if you're going to do that by yourself or if you're going to find some partners to do that. Uh, and I think those are the sort of decisions I, my, my sense is that you all uh, have uh, kind of at, at your or at, in front of you. And, um, and I personally believe that, that uh, going in alone and or doing nothing are – are options that will be very challenging over time. We're we're all competing. One of the things we learned early on is we're not uh, we're not uh, we're not competing against small guys. Now we know that because we're competing against Nike, obviously. But not only are we competing against Nike as we move into this new connected fitness business, but we're we're competing against 
guys like Apple and Google and Samsung, these are all people who are making connected products as well. And we have the unfortunate position of being competing against Nike who happens to be on the board, the CEO happens to be on the board of Apple and the Apple CEO happens to be on the board of Nike. So we've got a big competitor who's really tightly partnered up with a, another very big competitor that we're we're fighting against. And, uh, and so that, that was the challenge for us and I suspect you guys have similar kinds of uh, challenges that you're asking yourselves about. So uh, I'll leave it there. Um, that's our story. That's what we're doing uh, as Under Armour and Connected Fitness. That's our perspective in terms of the options that, that we think you have for yourselves as you consider this market. Um, and I guess we'll leave with uh, just any questions that folks have. I'm, I'm happy to answer them now. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Bill. Great presentation. I really appreciate your time. Uh, attendees, this is your chance to pose questions to Bill. Uh, please use the question interface to pose your question. And uh, while our attendees are kind of thinking through some uh, frames that they want to address, what's a good digital partnership look like uh, for Under Armour Connected Fitness in the, in the club space? Uh, you know, the, the, the first and easiest thing is to find ways to leverage the existing app platform. So we have an open API and SDK for our apps. So if you're a club, for example, and you want to um, have your own tracking app um, and you've got a team that's a team of developers that you're, that you're already starting to think that through, using the, the platform that we've built through the three acquisitions, leveraging the APIs and SDKs so that you can do simple things like authentication, of workouts, you can capture them, some of the basic statistics around heart heart rate and, and all those elements. You can leverage the routes platform, et cetera. Um, I think that's a, for us, that's a very simple, easy way to plug into our platform and start, get yourself going. Get, put an app out there. Uh, I think there are more sophisticated things that are coming. Uh, you know, everyone here has probably heard of ClassPass uh, and things like that. We think that's an early, uh, and you know, our, our sense is not maybe the best business model for folks in, in, the, in the gym space, but we think there are better business models coming. Uh, I know we're certainly working on, uh, on options and opportunities to get at that. So we think, I think that's another place that as, as gyms, you could think about Under Armour as a, as a partner and, and help us, frankly, evolve that. But the simplest answer, Todd, is uh, leverage the, the platform and plug into the APIs and SDKs. Even for, you know, you want to have your own branded app, leverage the, our platform to, to take advantage of all the capabilities that we've already built so you don't have to build them yourself. You don't have to build authentication of a workout. You don't have to build capturing heart rate data. You don't have to build displaying heart rate data, etc. So leverage the platform. Very simple. It's an open it's a, an open set of APIs and SDKs. It costs nothing to make API calls up to a certain level. Um, but that's the, that's the easiest way to plug in and get started. Any size limitations? Can anyone partner? Anybody, uh, you know, you, one gym or a uh, hundred gyms or a thousand gyms. Anybody, uh, we you know we've got we've got over 400 uh, different um, uh, partners already, primarily app uh, partners and or hardware partners who have plugged into the, the platform uh, to do various things, and that's you know everything from uh, I can't I can't speak to whether we have a lot of gyms or not in, engaged, but we've got a very small to very large, um, and as I said, over 400 folks have done done that on both the hardware and on the on the software side. Uh, I have a question from Brian, and I don't know, Bill, if you want to take this offline or you want to provide some contact information, but uh, Brian's question is, who can we reach out to for some guidance related to leveraging the platform? Uh, the easiest thing to do is to go to UA, UA. Uh, is it U, developer.ua.com, uh, and you'll be able to get a bunch of information right there at your fingertips, and you can start to download and start playing with stuff. That's the simple get, just get smart. Um, and then once you go through that, you'll understand uh, you know, what's the sort of level of engagement and involvement you want and then you can reach out, uh, frankly you can reach out directly to me or you, I think there's some, uh, some communication capability there and we'll connect you to our business development team and then our business development team can work with you to um, get engaged in the right way for you. But the easiest way is to go to developer.ua.com, download and start to read through that material and then make some decisions about how you want to engage, decide if you can do it on your own and if not uh, on your own then um, then reach out through the communication portal there and we'll get our business development folks will get engaged and work more directly with you to help uh, figure that out with you. Awesome, thanks. Uh, attendees, again, this is your chance to uh, pose questions to Bill. I see uh, a number of uh, senior folks in the industry here on the line with us today. I hope you uh, spend a moment here and uh, pose your question now. 
While folks are thinking through some questions, Bill, I'm wondering, you know, I think the bottom line for clubs is how does this partnership help us drive more membership? Yeah, I think it's a great question. And, you know, we've been thinking, uh, and I mentioned ClassPass already. I'm sure that uh, maybe I don't know who else on the phone, but I'm sure that you're all seeing some impact from things like ClassPass. And maybe you're seeing some growth. Maybe you're frankly not seeing growth, but instead you're seeing uh, price erosion. Uh, I, I believe that, that, that the opportunity for you guys is to find more members without taking the price down, which ClassPass is doing to you. I think we've got a platform, a value proposition, and we're building a value proposition that it will enable you to grow member base, uh, grow engagement base, uh, without reducing price, which is frankly what you're, what you're getting with, with a guy like ClassPass. Um, and so it, part of the challenge, I think, that in, uh, I assume that you see some of this if you're, if you're a gym, is that there's probably a very seasonal sort of activity schedule. While it feels good probably to take, take payment and not have the person show up, your ability to keep that person for the long term becomes very hard. Uh, and then, you know, when the seasons change, I'm sure change, I'm sure people come to the gym less, they use outdoor workouts more. Uh, so that seasonality is probably an impact for you guys. But the number one thing to keep people engaged is to engage them. The number one way to, at least we found, to keep, keep people around continuing to pay for service, we have some premium services in our apps, is to make sure that they use them. So usage, is, usage and the engagement are the best drivers of future revenue. And so I think the value to you guys can be how do you capture that complete picture of the athlete? How do you make sure that they're engaged with your brand 24-7, 365, not just in the winter months for an hour a day, four days a week? Uh, how do you make sure that they're seeing your brand and engaging your brand and you're delivering content to them throughout their day, throughout their weeks, throughout their months, even when they don't need you know, to go come do a workout? And, and I think that's where there's a lot of value for, 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 for gym owners is, is through engagement, regular engagement to keep people, uh, keep your brand in front of people and to find ways and find ways to engage them. And then frankly, over time, find new revenue streams to feed into the measure brand becomes more relevant. Uh, I have a question from uh, George who asks, is there a good example app that we can download for a club that has uh, implemented your APIs? Uh, as I said, I don't know of any clubs that have. Uh, I can I, I can find out uh, if you want to just drop me an email. I'll I'll do a search to see what other clubs have done uh, done so at this point. I don't I don't I just off the top of my head don't know any clubs that that have. But I'm I'm happy to give you some uh, some reference examples for sure. Thank you. And I've I've got another question uh, from Jill. Do you think health clubs can build a business model where it leverages your connected health platform to deliver wellness programs that not only increase membership? but share in the healthcare savings from making people healthier. In other words, by partnering with health plans and health systems. I think the, the, the simple answer is yes, it's possible. The challenge is that it's tremendously complex. Uh, and I, I, I will, I mean, it doesn't take, I think a lot of uh, creativity or imagination to say we, we should be participating in that. We meeting the folks on this phone and, my, and, and the folks at Under Armour, we are, in fact, for sure making folks healthier. And that, without a doubt, reduces insurance costs and reduces uh, health care costs globally. How you, how you partake in that savings and figure out what those business models are is really hard. So I will tell you, we've, since we've built out the platform, we've had a number of insurance companies, the largest insurance companies in the U.S. and abroad, reaching out to us about how do we leverage the data, leverage the insight to do exactly what, what was described. But building that business model, like they're ha th those insurance companies are happy to take the savings and put it in their pocket. How do we make sure that we partake in that and don't just sell shirts and shoes, but also take part in the value that's being created through our coaching and our inspiration? We haven't yet cracked that code. So I think the that's a little bit the golden goose, if you will. Um, and so I, I love the question. I think the challenge is the, is the execution. How do you build the business model that shares the revenue that comes from the value you're creating uh, in the preventative health care and the preventative uh, health care that you're creating for people, that you're driving for people? So, so yes, but hard to do. So at least our experience thus far, hard to do, uh, hard to ensure that you capture your fair share of that. It's good that you keep that person engaged. You'll keep them kind of in the gym or in your gym engage with you for longer, I suspect, but you 
and at least we would like to capture some of the value that goes goes to the healthcare provider and the insurance company too because they're getting a tremendous amount of value from the work that we do. Thanks, Bill. Uh, another question from Brian. In addition to our fitness businesses, we are the first connected strength manufacturer, Exerbotics. Can we discuss making our strength data available to and through the UA platform? Offline is more more than fine if you'd like to contact. Yeah, I think that the, this to so share uh, email and absolutely want to talk about that because, as you said, you know, there's that four part thing that or strategy that we're after, which is equip, track, coach, inspire. Tracking is all about reducing the friction, like making it so that that data automatically gets collected. And the reason is that we want to tell that complete story to the athlete. We want to tell them about their sleep, their activity, their their fitness and their nutrition. We want them to be able to see. So the easier we can make it to collect all of that data, whether it's they lifted a weight 10 times or they did 10 crunches or they did 10 miles, whatever it is, we want to take the we want to take all the friction out of that so it gets captured easily. So if there's an opportunity to work with an equipment manufacturer to collect that data in a seamless way for the athlete, we should absolutely talk about that. What's, what's going to be the easiest way for a, a club to kind of kick off their own engagement activities? And I know, you know, one of the things we kind of give up with partnering is control. Is there a way for a club to begin the process of sending out email communications through your platform once we've identified them as a member of our club using your APIs or using so once, your applications? Once you, once you get it up and running, you can use, there's a social feed built into the apps so that you're driving the engagement through the app itself and there are notifications that come through the app itself. So the most direct way that, that we at least have seen to date, and then you, you obviously have the, the, that person's email so you can work the email channel as well, but you have both in-app social feed, in-app notifications, and then email all three of those marketing levers, if you will, to start to drive engagement with the athlete. Things like, you know, you, you, you finished a run, weekly performance summaries, all those kinds of capabilities are embedded in those APIs. Awesome. Um, attendees, again, we're uh, getting close to that cutoff point. Uh, this is your chance to ask questions uh, of Bill. I hope you uh, take a moment here and uh, keep those questions coming. Uh, I do have a question concerning uh, if, if Under Armour is interested in integrating wellness devices like blood pressure cuffs, blood pressure cuffs, or glucometers. Is that something you guys are interested in? Uh, longer term, yes. We've we've had a number of folks who's, who've come to us about medical devices specifically. Um, you know, frankly, there's a lot for us to do on just the fitness side. The, 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 so we just haven't gotten to it yet. I mean, for, for sure, I mean, if we think about, think about it holistically, which goes back to the, the earlier question, where I think we all end up, like we are an important part of the equation. We, not just Under Armour, but you guys are an important part of the equation of preventative health. People don't care about their health until they've had an episode, which is much too late to care about your health. Um, if we can find ways to connect more data, whether that data is fitness data, whether that data is health data, your blood pressure, your glucose level, all those things, we can get a much more integrated view of, of your health. We will help you and we'll help the doctor when you show up there. I mean, the way you think about it this way, right? We know more about our car than we actually know about our health. You show up at the doctor maybe once a year, probably not that often. But every, and you know, right now, if I asked everyone on this phone how many days they were sick last year, well, what their blood type is, what their blood pressure level was, I bet 95 out of 100 wouldn't know all three of those things. But if I asked all of you the same questions about how much gas you have in your car, when was the last time you changed your oil, and when was the last time you changed your tires, 95% of you would know that. We know more about our cars that we drive around every day than we know about our body, which we live in. And so I think like having connections to those kinds of devices, we are gonna we are gonna be able to unlock huge value from a healthcare perspective for individuals as well as for doctors. Imagine in the future if you have this set of apps and this collection of data and you walk into the doctor's office, instead of them saying the one time a year they see you, how do you feel today? You can say, well, let me show you 365 days of how I felt, what I did, what workouts I completed, what food I ate, what my glucose level was once a week, what my heart rate, my resting heart rate was once a week. Now that's how I feel. There's 365 days of data. You can ingest it. You can run through it and you can come back with some really good health oriented feedback to someone not just well I guess you're not feeling too well today let us take your blood pressure 
So eventually we'll get to connected health devices. We haven't gotten there yet by any stretch of the imagination. We still have a lot to do on the fitness side. Gotcha. I have a question from Mike. Are you integrating with any group fitness programming slash tracks that create an experience that might keep the connection between inside and outside the four walls? We're, we're looking at that. The answer is we, not, we have not yet done that, but we are certainly thinking about how do we get that content more engaged uh, into the community. There are some things that we're doing around uh, hardware and algorithms so that um, to, to, take, to, again, take friction out of, uh, out of the sort of collection of data in the gym. So if someone walks into the gym, to give, for us, you know, as, as Matt and I, it was very natural to use GPS for outdoor tracking. So we can track a bunch about your run using GPS and hurry monitors, et cetera. Once you go into the gym, the challenge becomes much harder. You can't use GPS, and there's no, today at least, really simple way to figure out that you did 10 reps of, pu of push-ups, 10 reps of bench press at 137 pounds, 10 reps of curls at 45 pounds, et cetera. So what we're working on with hardware providers is how do you build algorithms that auto-detect the rep, the weight, and the, and the form of those particular exercises so that we can make the in-gym experience much, much richer and much easier to track. So we think there's certainly content opportunities, but we're spending a lot more time, at least today, uh, on figuring out how do you make tracking in the gym super seamless so that I don't have to write it down or think about it, it automatically gets collected. And we think that's the important way so that when they go away from the gym, they have their in-gym experience, their out-of-gym experience, in a really holistic way to, to see that. So that's where we're spending more of our time is on that in-gym friction reduction as opposed to content connection. We are, we are certainly talking to some folks about content as well, but we're spending a lot more time talking about those algorithms and the, the friction reduction in in-gym. Awesome, mate. Thanks for your question, Mike. I, I have another question from George. Will data be shared with the Apple Health app slash platform? We do share some data with Apple Health, but not all. We're very selective about it. Um, the same with the Google's uh, health, health system and, and Microsoft's as well. We're just very selective uh, in terms of how we share back and forth between them, some for our consumer's value and some for, frankly, our own value. Um, but they, the, the apps are, are integrated into, into those health platforms. Just uh, the data, data sharing is a bit more selective. That's all. Well, it looks like we're uh, getting to the end of our session. Uh, any final thoughts on uh, how to partner successfully with Under Armour Connected Fitness? I guess what I would say, the, the, the one is persistence. A couple of words, I guess, persistence and patience. You know, we're, we've got a lot going on. We've just made $700 million worth of uh, investments. We're, while we're growing fast, we're not a big company. We're still relatively small, only you know, going on $4 billion. So, we, you know, we're just like most companies, resource constrained. So what I would say is you think about partnering with us, leverage those resources that we put out there that are easy for you to use, and then as you start to look for greater engagement from us, be persistent and be patient. I think those are the, the sort of key words that will ensure that we get to the, the goal that we all have for ourselves. We, we are trying to take on a lot. Uh, we certainly intend to conquer the world, but uh, it takes time. Well, Bill, thank you so much for your time and for supporting the MotionSoft Technology Summit Education Series. And to our attendees, not only for this session, but for the last 11, thank you so much for making this series so successful. I appreciate uh, your participation and wish you a wonderful 2016. This will conclude our final session of the 2015 education series. Have a great day. Thank you.